collectors and especially uh, Terminator fans. This is the uh, much anticipated uh, figure, uh, I wouldn't say of the year, but mostly for Terminator 1 fans. Uh, we've been craving for this for a while now. Um, a good Terminator 1 T-800 figure. And finally, I think we got it. Um, this is an excellent figure, so um, I know you've seen some of this, some of the reviews now um, out there, but hopefully this would uh, kind of push you forward into getting this figure even more. So uh, let's get it started, guys. And as usual, we're going to start off with the box. I like the art cover of this one. Looks, it's just shouting 80s to me. The Terminator font, the cheesy you know, effects and everything, the light show behind it. And this is the back of the box. It kind of looks, kind of simulates what the Terminator is seeing. And with all this text messages and everything, when has he's when he's trying to ter determine something, all the, the that person I don't even know who that person is. Looks like Scarface. See him? See that with the red and you know black silhouette? And a usual cardboard uh, cardboard um, I would say shoe box type box for Hot Toys. It's like the Terminator with some bullet holes on it. T800 battle damage can take this out this is the uh, inlay and you can see t800 in distress font with bullet holes underneath the shotgun movie masterpiece series could have easily been a DX figure and um, the laser pointer light show and that's him and that's all its glory you can check him out last time now we'll jump into the um, accessories and this is his manual make sure you read it there's a lot of good information knowing on it it's really not but yeah he comes with a bunch of hands and this is the uh, gun holding hands it has the it, you can easily determine it you can see the you know the trigger finger kind of extends uh, I like the fact that they included both battle damage um, hands and non battle damage hands actually there's only two battle damage hands which I'll show later uh, you know I like the fact that they included that just because of the fact that on DX 13 they didn't do that and which I was trying to do a, a kit bash just to utilize the extra head in the jacket and I was you know going through the hands and I, I noticed that there is no you know non battle damage hands but I'm trying to do a clean version of Arnold and it's kind of silly that you know only his gloves is kind of messed up but you know at least I have this and I'm gonna use this and this hand is kind of like the barrel holding hand you know when he's holding this this long guns and shotgun uh, if you want it, normally it, it's a lot cooler when he holds it with one hand but if you decided with, to, to go with two then he can hold the other barrel with that hand and this is the fisted hands and this is what I'm talking about earlier, the uh, battle damage hands. Looks kind of similar to the uh, DX13 hands, but I I don't know. For some reason, I think it's more, I, I don't know how to say it, more detailed, so to speak. Because the, um, I don't know, the damage of the gloves and the skin inside, I think it's more profound on this version. And you can see the finger there, and look at that, it's, it's amazing. N I'm not selling DX13 short, because I do love that figure as well. But I, I think this one is, I don't know if it's the case of better is newer, I mean newer is better, but yeah, I just think this overall it looks better. See the battle damage there, and I do like the fact that Hot Toys didn't just copy the right hand into the left hand, and then you know, just made it left and right. They actually you know tried to make some differences on both hands uh, they could have easily copped out and copied the exact same damage but they didn't you know some holes in the left hand you see that the middle finger is not da damaged at all so kudos to Hot Toys for that and his um, his guns which he does have a lot which will figure you know feature here this is the pump action shotgun it looks like an autoloader spas 12 gauge shotgun not sure what the model is but it looks pretty good and it has some weight on it you know it has this handle 
Uh, it's not made out of metal, it's made out of plastic, but the paint app is really good. You know, Hot Toys is really good at that, distressing guns and, you know, simulating this, this metallic look. Uh, it, it, it does pump just a regular shotgun, you know, one of their, you know, if you have any hot shotguns from Hot Toys, you see this can kind of cocks back and forth. Um, not sure what that is, it looks like a sight, iron sight of something. And this one you know cocks back as well and it looks like it's, it feels like it's spring loaded you see it just goes right back in its place and um yeah that's it's a pretty good looking shotgun and this one not sure what kind of model of gun is this uh, it doesn't look like an m16 to me it doesn't have a butt stock so i guess it's a modified of something i don't know dual mag he taped it you can see the tape it looks distressed as well iron side it, it, overall the, the gun looks good you know and this one cocks back this is met i would say metal and it's also spring loaded there's a lot of details on the gun you see that pin right there I'm not sure if it's the same as the barney ross m4 that you can split the upper and lower receiver I mean, I, tr I tried doing it, it doesn't look like it, but from the, the looks of that pin, it does look like it could separate. But I, 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 I don't want to mess this gun up, it looks so good, so I'll leave it as it is. Maybe down the line, if, you know, I got more time. It has a sling as well that is accessible. You can make it longer, make it shorter. Really, really nice details on this gun. And moving forward, more guns, actually. This time it's a uh, six shooter revolver. Pretty nice, you know. It, I would I would even go say as as much as this is a lot better than the Barney Ross gun, even though this one doesn't doesn't hammer back. Um, see the paint apps. It's all silver, no distress on this one, but this one goes out, and you can see the bullets inside. Pretty cool, nice details on it. Wish you could spin it though, but it doesn't spin. But the good thing about this gun is that it would make all those customizers happy. This is perfect for any Rick Grimes figure. Maybe make the barrel a little bit longer. But yeah, this is perfect. I, I would say if, if I was doing some kit bashes, I would definitely use this one. Nice gun. And, um, you know, I'm trying to figure out if the, this thing goes out, but can't. And in and, and the meantime, I'm, I'm messing up my uh, my focus. So, enough of this gun, and we'll move on to the other handgun. Once again, I'm not sure what type of gun is this. It looks like a Desert Eagle, back from my Counter Counter Strike days. Maybe I'm not sure. Don't quote me on that, gun people. Uh, that's the um, laser pointer that he used on Sarah when he's trying to kill Sarah Connor. I forgot the name of the bar, Tech Noir cocks back you know and this is what he's he was holding on the uh, poster as well so this gun is kind of iconic in a sense that you know back in the day this looks so cool like you got this big ass laser pointer on your gun you look like a like a killing machine now it looks kind of silly if you're walking around with that big of a laser pointer but you can see the mag has bullets sticking out uh, two-tone the handle it's a different texture than from the rest of the gun Maybe you can take that out, that laser pointer, but you know I'm not gonna mess around with it. Maybe it's one of these days. And um, oh, my favorite accessory, the gargoyle glasses. I love these glasses. And but you gotta be careful when when you're holding these glasses. It it's kind of fragile. Uh, I guess one wrong move and you can snap the uh, the handles. So be extra cautious. But it's amazing amazing piece of work the i would say the the best accessory if you want to call it one is this head sculpt this is the uh, ultra i would say more battle damage sculpt which we're going to tackle on later on because as if you watch my videos i try to separate the head sculpt to the uh, accessories so we're not going to put too much attention to that what i do love though is if I wasn't into Terminator figures, I would still try to get this base. Look at how cool this base is. Terminator T-800. It looks so... It's a street street pavement. But if you watch the movie, which I watched it before doing this, this video. Because I 
pretty sure I've seen the movie before, but I forgot about it. It looks like this pipe bomb, some bullet shells on the floor, some, you know, glass pieces, shattered glass pieces or debris or whatever it might be. Look at those blood splatters. Just, it's amazing. You can't take them off. They're, they're like sculpted into the, uh, and look at the texture of the ground. They're sculpt sculpted into the base itself. But it's, look at that. It's amazing. Look at this piece of wood. Some bullet shells there. And they're so detailed. Honestly, I, I, I have a ton of nice bases with Bane. Um, the DX-13. This blows the DX-13 out of the water right away. It has the same functionality like the light up LED. But the DX-13 looks like a modified Bane. This one is amazing, and it's not even a DX figure. That's what I'm talking about. You know, like earlier, it's just the amount of detail. You can position this left and right for for those of you ha who hasn't seen this yet. That, and now we'll move on to the figure itself. That's the boots, nice and soft rubber. And that little thingy, uh, it doesn't come off, but it looks like a separate piece. His pants is well tailored. I like the fabric that they used as well. The jacket is kind of interesting. Well, not really. We've seen this before in the DX13, but I, I just saw in the picture that you can zip it up. I didn't know. Maybe I didn't just, just didn't try it on the DX13. But you can see some zippers on the sides as his pockets. A lot of details. And it looks like the jacket is more snug, more fitted than the DX13 ones. The belt itself, yeah, I, I just saw this look on 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 the web page of Sideshow Collectibles. I guess one of the promotional pictures, and I noticed was like, well, wait a second, you can close the jacket because the zipper is not aligned to the actual jacket itself. So I just give gave it a shot. It's it's kind of hard to do so, especially you know if once you're filming and everything, but um, you'll get the hang of it. Some. Look at this details on the side. If you this is the first time that you've seen an Arnold figure, you'll be amazed with the amount of details. On the back, it's bullet holes after bullet holes. Um, you see the belt, and you see that that shiny thing on the back on his back. That looks those are blood splatters. You know, I learned that from the crow before that it looks like I thought it was something wrong with with the fabric of my jacket, but they're they're blood like spilling out. So it has that cool effect right there. And one thing that I do like is the fact that, yes, they, it, he does have a battle damage jacket on the back. But DX-13's mistake was that the inside of the shirt is not battle damage. As you can see there, that's the actual shirt inside. And once you take off the jacket, you can see some blood, uh, like dried up blood on the uh, on his shirt as well. So that's, that's, a, that's a good detail that they added right there see the arms with some zipper on the side those are actually functioning zippers but I would say the wrist of his jacket is already closed so they're more for as yeah I guess aesthetic purposes than actual functionality and as I was talking about earlier this jacket um, I don't know I like this look him uh, for him the the closed jacket look so I'm going to zoom it out a little bit so I can show you how it works. As you can see he has a battle damage chest as well. And it's not just a regular TTM 20 body. Well, I guess it is. But at least they did some modifications to it. I'll just quickly show you. You know, because the, the belt is... I wouldn't say sawn into the jacket. But it's it sticks, sticks there. And once you get off the, the figure from the box it it already has the, the jacket open so I did this myself and it's not too hard it's it's a little harder because I'm, I'm trying to film at the same time but I guess the only I wouldn't, I wouldn't even call it hurdle is the zipper part because the zipper is so tiny and but well, yeah you can just pop it all off just like a regular zipper from any jacket and yep you got the open look there and as you can see in his abdomen area he has a, a gunshot wound there as well as you can see the blood coming out of his, uh, you know, his shirt, and the pattern of the shirt is dead on as well. You know, I tried comparing it on the film. Looks pretty good. And I was talking about earlier. This is, um, I wouldn't say a new body, but 
Yeah, look at that. Nice arm. If you can recall from the movie, he got, I would say, he got shot there or something or got injured there and then he's trying to work on his pistons on his arm. Um, yeah, and then tons of articulation though. You know, double jointed elbows, you know, some movement and you can see some blood on his abdomen area. It, 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 I, I want to say this is a TTM 20, you know, this, but I, it's like a nice new body for the neck. Although my, my biggest complaint was the neck and not just my, not just by myself, but to anyone who has the figure, but it doesn't really bother me all that much. And I'm not going to remove the shirt, but I'll just show you that he has some damages, you know, all over one in his abdomen and one of his chest area. Yeah, it's filled with blood as well. It's just fitting. Cause, I mean, they could have easily taken the shortcut and just put like blood on his on his shirt. But that's what two hundred thirty dollars would do for you. And now we'll move on to the sculpt. And I love this head sculpt, this battle damage head sculpt. I mean, I do love it, but I'm I'm gonna display mine in the in the non. I would say not battle damage, but less battle damage head sculpt. What I'm trying to do now is, you know, turn on the light on the back of his head. There you go. I guess one complaint that I do have is this new thing. I hope this doesn't, you know, become a thing for Hot Toys where if you press it, it only lasts for 40 seconds because it's annoying. You know, well, I'm, I'm doing this video. I'm not gonna constantly stop every 40 seconds and just light it up i mean it looks nice when it's lit up you know especially doing some videos but it's gonna turn off in 40 seconds and i'm not gonna turn it on again as you can see the battle damage on his cheek look at that look at those pistons it's amazing see it's off now isn't that annoying yeah and you're trying to show off to your friends and whatnot you know trying to take a picture of it then you didn't like the post oh i gotta i gotta open the head again i mean it's not that hard it's magnetized any one of you who, who doesn't know how it works um you, should, you know just watch any other videos it's like a regular dx figure on the back of his head you can see the seam on his hair right there yeah it's but yeah it's it's annoying though but i i mean apart from that Look at that. Look at that figure right there. That's the seam. I just made sure that it's it's all tied up. You know, the, the cut on his face. Some cut on his above his ear. Showing all the uh, endoskeleton. Hair is nice, nicely sculpted as well. Look at that. Look at that cheek. I would even go as far as saying this is a lot battle damage than the DX13. Look at that. Because of the fact that it, it caves in. It's not just embossed coming out. It's ca it, it's caved in. That's why I do like it. And um, this is the um, semi battle damage. This is the, I guess when his eye got injured and he went to the bathroom and just kind of took it out. So he's not really all that hurt yet. Just the eye. That's wor That's when he starts wearing his gargoyle glasses. So you can see there. That's the eye. It's all caved in inside as well. I love it. I love the depth. Uh, the 3D effect, yep, I turned it on again, and it's going to die again in 40 seconds. But as, as you notice, he doesn't have his eyebrows. Um, watch the film again. This is right after the car explodes. That's why all of his, I would say, facial hair is gone. It's all burnt out. Look at that. That's Arnold all the way. So people are complaining to some of his features. You know, I'm not that... I guess I'm not that hard to please. I mean, uh, to me, it looks like him. You can make the argument on the neck, you know, proportion, which which I do agree, but it doesn't kill the figure for me. You know, it, I mean, I'm not bothered by it. Would I like it to be a little bit bigger? Sure. But with the amount of accessories and everything, the look that we're getting from this guy, that's the least of my worries. And uh, yeah, look at that. And like I said earlier, as much as I do love the battle damage head, which I really, really do like it. Maybe I'll use it if I want to bash uh, a new figure down the line. Not a new figure, but another T-800 down the line. In the meantime, I guess I'll stick with this guy because I already have the, the DX-13. 
in my opinion that is the battle damage arnold that i want to display for him i'll just pop this in this cargo glasses because to me this is terminator one right here there you go look at that when you think about terminator one this is what pops into your head gargoyle and and the good thing about this glass is it's a bit translucent so once you turn this on i mean the lights on his head there you go you can see it right through the glasses awesome if i can just adjust it a little bit higher there you go it sits right perfectly on his face and like i said you got to be careful with these glasses you got to make sure it's aligned to his uh there's like a seam on his not ear and and his hair it's like a little opening that you just slide the glasses through beautiful look at that that's how i'm going to display him here i'm not even sure if it's a mullet or not i guess some of it got burned off so from the car explosion and this is me trying to simulate the look from the poster i didn't really do a good job but yeah, I'm just trying to throw this 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 review right away, so I just want you to take a glimpse of some poses that I'm gonna do. Looks good, and I'm I'm using my action TT now. One of the poses you can pull off as well. A shotgun on the shoulder, and his rifle on the other hand. Just looking badass. Look at that. Oh, that's all you gotta do. I mean, you can have him in a museum post holding two cans and he would look badass. You know, that's that's how great this figure is. I just wanna utilize all the guns that you know we that's provided from us. So what, what I'll probably do is just put the uh this machine gun on his shoulder and then have him hold the you know the um, the desert eagle if or if it's even a desert eagle. Look at that. What a thing of beauty. And, you know, just one more pose, I guess. This is his battle damage look. With his uh, <laughs> Michael Jackson stance like a thriller. I, I don't know. I'm just trying to copy the, the pose from the website from Sideshow Collectibles. One of their... I don't even recall if he did this thing. I don't know. There's some explosion in the back. Maybe. Maybe he's trying to crawl out. Who knows? But... Nice to have that option. Oh, you can see the head. Yeah, you can see the light it turned off again. Fantastic. That's where it's handy. And right after this, I'll, I'll show you how it looks like on my shelf as well and leads off. And, yep, here you go. You don't worry about the flickering lights. That's my LED. You know, it's standing right next to my DX13 with the uh, T1000 on the back. The T1000 takes up a lot of space, so you gotta elevate them to make to make this this two figures fit. Go to Hobby Lobby or whatever hobby shop, get one of those transparent cases, take the lid off, and have them stand there. I, I don't know if you can see it there, but yeah, if you do that, he'll fit right in. And um, that's pretty much about it. You know, this is, you know, if you're planning to buy this figure, if you were, you know, like a, just a collector just like myself. This would look good on your shelf. You don't need anything right next to it. You don't need a DX13, DX10. You know, you don't even need a T1000 next to it. He looks good by himself. And he's he's just iconic just by himself. Um, with a price tag of 230 you can't go wrong. With Hot Toys prices flying the shelves nowadays, you, you get a bare bones figure for 250 This is a steal. Like I said earlier, this should have been a DX figure, but it's not. And it's not priced like a DX figure either. So grab your hands on it uh, while you can. This is one of the figures that might sell out. Maybe not right away, but eventually it will. So yeah, thanks for watching. And uh, if you haven't subscri subscribed yet, please do so or share this video. And uh, till next time.